Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika and I am so excited for today's video because I am going to be talking about my best and worst purchases of the year. Now 2021 was a slower year with makeup purchases for me. This whole panorama really mixed things up and most of the year I was wearing a mask so it actually stopped me from wearing as much makeup as I normally do, which was really upsetting. And I really missed my morning routine of watching YouTube and putting on makeup. I was literally putting on half a face of makeup, like concealer, eyebrows, mascara, and I'm out the door. So I don't have as many products to talk about today, but the ones I do have, I am really excited for. So if you enjoyed this video while you're watching, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I would love it if you would subscribe. All right, starting with some foundations. I haven't used these as much as I normally would, but every time I use them, I was just loving it. First is the Essence Pretty Natural Hydrating Foundation. This is the shit. <laughs> So it's only $10 and it comes with 30 mil of product. It has such a beautiful coverage. It is full, but it is satin and it looks fresh and glowy and it lasts for a really long time. It is heat resistant. It actually stays in place. I did wear this one night to a musical and we still had to wear our mask the entire time. And when I got home and took my mask off, it had only rubbed off, like not even rubbed off, just, you know, just a little bit, a little bit on my nose and my chin. The rest of my face still looked flawless. Like I am obsessed with this foundation. The only thing that I'm not here for is the lightest shade available here in Australia is 050 neutral champagne and it's too dark for me. So I do have to add in some lightning drops. If you go onto the Essence website though, there are so many shades in this range. So if you're in a country where you can get the whole shade range, I'm sure you can find something that works better for fair skin and even on the deeper end of the scale as well. But if you're in Australia, they literally have like eight shades of beige and it sucks. But it's an amazing formula. I love this so much. Next, I have quite an unexpected one for me. And this is the Morphe 2 Hint Hint Skin Tint. Now this is described as a sheer to medium coverage. I feel like 2021 and even like a bit of 2020 was the year of... Um, like sheer coverage foundations. We really got into that more lightweight foundation kind of vibe. And I am like a full coverage person. Like I love me some coverage, but I can get on board with the more lightweight foundations. And this one was just beautiful. I feel like I have dipped into some more lightweight, sheer tint kind of foundations over the year when I could. And this was just the standout. A lot of them, they're very sheer in texture and they look, they look that way on your face. Like it's just, it's not nice. Whereas this is sheer in texture, but you're still getting a good coverage. And I just don't know how to explain. It's like, it's rich. It's sheer, but it's rich. I hope you're getting what I'm saying. But I love this. I did use the Shade Finder online and it matched me with Hint of Latte. And it says light with neutral pink undertones. So that sounds like spot on for me, but it's actually a touch too dark. So I do still have to put some lightning drops in it. There are plenty of other shades though, plenty of lighter shades. So I could definitely go and try out something else. But if you love that sheer feeling foundation, it's actually quite long lasting as well. I would definitely, definitely recommend this. Also with the Morphe 2 foundation, it does have a dropper style applicator and it is so tidy. Like it's not making a mess. It's very nice. Next, I have some products from NYX and first is the Marshmallow Primer. I feel like I've been raving about this all year. It is just beautiful. It has a pore filling quality to it, but not that thick silicon pore filling quality. It feels so smooth on the skin and it's very hydrating as well. It's kind of like the perfect primer for me. I absolutely love the packaging. I think that it's so cute and it smells divine. Oh my God, it is beautiful. I really love the texture of this primer as well and it leaves your skin feeling very smooth and soft 
kind of velvety but hydrated. It's just it's fantastic. And also by NYX is the Bear With Me Primer Set Refresh Multitasking Spray. This is your drugstore version of MAC Fix Plus pretty much. Again, the packaging, beautiful. I love it. I don't use this as a setting spray. It does say it gives up to eight hours longevity, but I prefer to use it the same way I would use MAC Fix Plus. So I like to spray it over my makeup at the end of my look to just settle all those powders in. It's good to use um, on, like if I'm doing soap brows, to spray on the soap. It's also really good to use to dampen your brush if you want your metallic eyeshadows to really pop. It's got a really nice mist on it as well. I love the way that it spritzes out. It does have a little bit of a scent. It's kind of like perfumey, but it's not strong and overpowering where you want to just like vomit. It's quite nice. It's very, very pleasant to use. I really love it. Next, I have a brow product and all, <laughs> all I feel like I've done this year is talk about this and it is the Essence Tiny Tip Precise Brow Pen. I just can't get enough of brow pens. They just add in those little strokes into your brows. If you've got sparse brows, really, really good option because the strokes look so hair-like. I particularly love it for the arch and tail end of my brow where it's quite <laughs> limited on hair. <laughs> But what I love about this pen is the felt tip applicator. It gives you such small, tiny, precise lines. I don't know how I'm gonna draw this, let me. <laughs> okay, I've just done a few on my hand. It's really hard to show how to do it <laughs> on camera or backwards like this. What I love about this pen is that it releases the perfect amount of pigment. You're not having to press down really hard to get the product out. And it's also not giving you the opposite end where you draw a little stroke and heaps of product comes pouring out. It is such a good product. It is really affordable. The only thing I would love is to have the lighter shade available here in Australia. So there are three shades available. I have dark brown and then there is a black, but there's also a blonde shade that isn't available here, which is a real bummer because I would love to test that out. This shade does work for me. I just have to go in with a light hand and like, you know, not go too crazy. But if you want to try out a brow pen, I would definitely recommend this one. Next, I have a pricey one. And this is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. Now this was released in 2020, I'm pretty sure, but I ummed and art over it for so long. And then I finally thought, it's the palette for me. I need it. It was a whopping $111. Uh. <laughs> but oh my God, I am so glad I picked this up. The shades in here are beautiful and they're cool toned, which I have learned work really well for my fair skin. You get 15 shades in the palette and it has a good variety of shimmers and mattes. I find the quality of the eyeshadows to be up to standard, what I would expect from a $111 Natasha Denona palette. The shades are just so beautiful. You can get many different looks from this palette from like a simple, soft, very natural look to something very heavy and glam. I did use this palette on my wedding day and I thought that my eyeshadow turned out very nice. If you wanna dip into cool tones, I would recommend picking up the ColourPop That's Tote palette first and see how you go. And then if you're loving it, I would recommend this one. Very, very pricey, but I'm very glad that I have it in my collection. And then lastly, for my best purchases, I have some lip products, starting with the NYX Lingerie XXL Liquid Lipstick, and this is in the shade Undressed, and it's what I am wearing today. This shade is just <sighs> giving it to me. I feel like it complements so many eyeshadow looks. It's more of a deeper nude, cool toned, I just, Oh my God, I can't get enough of it. Now I know people like get really turned off liquid lipsticks. I feel like when they first come out, we all had very bad experiences, but this liquid lipstick is very comfortable, super opaque. So you only need to use a little bit of product and you're getting that full color coverage. Whereas I feel like back in the day, they were a little bit more streaky so you had to go in with a lot of product and that's what caused them to feel really uncomfortable and thick and crack and ugh. but anyway that's not what happens with this lipstick it is very comfortable very long lasting and just the entire range 
like the shades are to die for i do have another one here this is the shade low cut like come on beautiful oh my god i love the packaging as well very cute and they're pretty affordable. They always go on sale. So if you're a bit iffy on liquid lipsticks, I would recommend this formula. And just look at the shade range. Like, it's beautiful. <laughs> and then I have the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. And this is in the shade 003 Moon. The packaging of these glosses is just outstanding. Well done, Maybelline. Very sleek, very... 2021 i love it now within the range of these lip glosses i'm pretty sure there were two or three different formulas so this one is sheer and it has a bit of a shimmer through it whereas another one i picked up is more pigmented like it's got a bit more color depth to it and i don't really love that one as much so as you can see a light sheer pink with a bit of shimmer it looks beautiful on its own it looks beautiful on top of lipsticks and it's just a very comfortable formula. It's not overly sticky. The gloss, like the shine, actually lasts for a really long time. It feels very hydrating on the lips and there's a big shade range to choose from. All right, now onto some products that really just pissed me off. <laughs> I think you all know what my first one is going to be and it was the newly formulated Maybelline Superstay Active Foundation. I cannot believe that they reformulated the Superstay. That foundation was perfect. It was my all-time favorite foundation. Beautiful coverage, beautiful finish, so long-lasting. Like, it ticked every single box for me. It's the foundation I wore on my wedding day. Like, it was my number one. And then they come in with this reformulation out of nowhere. And so I was excited. I'm like, ooh, new Superstay. Tried it and I just, like it could have made me cry. Like I'm still mad about it, if you can't tell. <laughs> Luckily, I like went to some shops and picked up a few backups of the original. So I should have enough to last me, but I'm just not, not impressed. One good thing, okay, I'll just, I'll say one good thing about the new, the new one, all right? They extended the shade range, so there was a lighter shade which worked better for me, but that's it. Everything else about it, I hated. <laughs> the coverage was nowhere near the same as the original, and it just looked like patchy on my skin. It did not look good. <sighs> I do have a whole review on it. I'll link it down below if you want to go and watch it, but yeah, I was just so disappointed, and that was a real fail in my humble opinion. <laughs> Another one by Maybelline, which I really just, <laughs> what, was the Fit Me Tinted Moisturizer. As I said before, it was the year of the lightweight sheer coverage and the foundations and Maybelline releases one. How exciting, looks good, it's in a squeezy tube, good shade range. Let me give it a go. Now when I went to Priceline, I did like Google some reviews just to see and a lot of the reviews weren't very good, but Nakia Joy had a very positive review and I trust her opinion. So I was like, look, I'm just gonna give it a go anyway. I'll link the video down below where I tried it for the first time. It just was not it, okay? It was not it, it did not blend. When I put it on my face, it was just instantly patchy and there was no fixing it so look i've loved maybelline for years i love a lot of their products but their foundations this year were just not it another foundation that did not impress me was the fenty eavesdrop now when this was released and i read all the claims i was like oh my god this is going to be my new favorite foundation what really sold me on this were the claims about it being heat resistant sweat resistant humidity proof i was like holy shit like this is going to be amazing it also claimed to be really lightweight so i was like this is going to be the perfect foundation for summertime here in queensland now because it was one of those like tinted foundation formulas they did that thing where they combine shades so i picked up the shade one and it was just way, way too light. But looking online at shade two and the different shades that fell under that category, I thought shade two was gonna be way too dark. So first problem, the shade just, it doesn't work. I really 
have found that I'm not liking when brands do this whole joining a bunch of shades together. Like it just doesn't work. So the Fenty one was way too light for me and it looked good when I first applied it, but after just a few hours, it was breaking up, it was patchy, it just looked tragic. It had creased in all these different areas on my face that don't usually crease. I was like, what is going on? Again, I have a full review. I'll link it down below if you want to go and watch it, but it was just a disappointment. And it's a real shame because I like Fenty products. I like the brand. I actually get excited about a lot of their releases, but all the foundations I've tried from them just haven't worked for me. So I really don't think I will be trying any more foundations if they release them because I've just been burnt too many times. <laughs> and then lastly, for my worst products I tried this year was the Revolution Brow Pen. Okay, you get the vibe. You know I'm into brow pens. I want to try them all. This one actually had a like the applicator, let me, let me get a brush here, was like this. So instead of being like a pointy tip, it was like a brush. I was like, how cool is that? And when I first used it, it applied beautifully. The color was nice, nice and thin lines. It was doing everything I wanted. And then it dried down to this red color, like maroon. I was like, what the hell is going on? Again, this is in a video, so I'll link it down below if you want to go and see oh, the mess unfold. But I was just like, what is happening? Ah. So yeah, unfortunately I couldn't use that one again because I'm not here for maroon colored brows, but anyway. So they were my best and worst purchases of 2021. I would love to hear your thoughts below. Have you tried any of these products out? How did they work for you? What are some products that you tried this year that you love and that you hate? Let's have a conversation down below. I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. I really hope that next year we don't have to go back to mask life because I'm really enjoying playing with makeup again and testing it all out. I'm really excited to see what next year brings, what kind of products are going to be released. I feel like I actually have a bunch of products from this year that I still need to give some more time to. All right, well, that is all from me. If you enjoyed watching, please give this video a thumbs up and I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. You can also come and follow me over on Instagram and TikTok and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.